Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine with me.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. The Gospel for this service comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty promises as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, pour oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Tonight, for this service, we gather around the Lord's Prayer. This is the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. It's the prayer that God teaches us in our faith life. And this prayer is something that we've come to know, and many of us know it very well. The version that we know it was kind of developed in the 16th century. However, Christians have been saying this prayer most commonly, most frequently, starting with the fourth century. That's when it really came into use. And often it was connected with Holy Communion as a preparation of our hearts for receiving the sacrament of Holy Communion. In these petitions of this prayer, it's all that we need. 
in those times when we do not know what to say or how to call on God or how to put our words in order, in order to speak a word to God, we have this prayer. It's all encompassing. And I'd like to lift up two pieces of this prayer. In Martin Luther's small catechism, there are explanations of each petition. And I'd like to read the, what is called the traditional form of this prayer and expound upon those petitions. It reads, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Those beginning lines of the Lord's Prayer know something very special for us, that we have a God that we can call on as our heavenly parent, a God that we can boldly pray to, and we will forever be God's children. And then the other petition I'd like to lift up comes from the fourth petition, the give us today our daily bread. Hear this list of what daily bread is according to Martin Luther. He writes, what is this? What does this mean? In fact, God gives daily bread without our prayer, even to all evil people. But we ask in this prayer that God cause us to recognize what our daily bread is and to receive it with thanksgiving. What then does daily bread mean? Everything included in the necessities and nourishment of our bodies, such as food and drink, clothing, shoes, house, farm, fields, livestock, money, property, an upright spouse, upright children, upright members of the household, upright and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, decency, honor, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. As a pastor and as a person, I've experienced this prayer in many places. Not only was it taught to me in my upbringing, but it was taught to me at seminary. I've used it with groups of people that I barely know, and yet it's something that many of us have had some recollection of saying. And so you can often say it with people without any preparation. I've used it in hospital rooms as a mantra to get me through a hard time when a family member is in a hospital bed. I've seen it spoken by people who couldn't tell me what day it was, but they were able to say this prayer together. I invite you to think about this prayer, to reflect on what this prayer means to you, which petitions stand out to you, what God might be giving to you in this prayer, in this time. It is a gift. It is a conversation with God that we can keep going. And so we give thanks for the Lord's Prayer and the opportunity to reflect upon it. Let us join in the conversation. For our service this evening, we are joined by Gary Holmsa, Trinity's Council President, and we have an opportunity to have a conversation about the Lord's Prayer and where prayer shows up in our lives. And so, Gary, would you share a little bit about yourself? Yes, my name is Gary Holmseth, and I'm married to my wonderful wife, Dar Holmseth. We've both been educators in the Blue Earth Area School District for well over 30 years. She retired last July 31st. Uh, I'm currently working also for the Grenada Huntley East Chain School District as a tech integrationist. We have two grown sons, and uh, both sons were baptized in Trinity. They were both confirmed in Trinity. Nice. And like you said, I'm the uh, council president. Very good. 
And our topic, the Lord's Prayer, and how does prayer and the Lord's Prayer show up in your life? That's a really good question. You know, w when you told me about the topic, I, I sat down and I started thinking about it, and three things kind of resonated with me, and they were, ironically, at different times of my life. And uh, the first one was, I was probably in middle school, and our family belonged to South Blue Earth Lutheran Church, I'm sure you're aware of mm -hmm. where that is, halfway between Braceland and Frost. And uh, I'm probably in middle school at the time. I honestly still remember this. Sitting, we were always, the home steps were the second row from the back on the right side. The Helgeson sat right behind us. You know, everybody sat in the same spot. And I remember saying the Lord's Prayer and I had my head down and and my dad sitting next to me, and I turned my head to look and see, is my dad saying it? Because in public, he was a very mild-mannered, didn't say a whole lot kind of guy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yes, he was. He was saying it very softly, uh, but his mouth was clearly saying the Lord's Prayer. And, you know, periodically, I would uh, check on him to see, is he saying the Lord's Prayer? And... <laughs> You know, I think that was something that made the Lord's Prayer meaningful to me, mm -hmm. uh, because he certainly didn't sing hymns. Okay. <laughs> and not many of uh, the homesteads did. We weren't very musical. Um, but then fast forward to when, when Dar and I had uh, the two boys, um, we'd tuck them in at night, and we would say the prayer, now I lay me down to sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, then... I, I started saying the Lord's Prayer to them. Now, they didn't know the Lord's Prayer, but I would ask them if, as I'm saying it, they can remember any of the words each night mm -hmm. to chime in. And it surprised me. After, it wasn't that long, and it, they had it now. Nice. And so this morning, uh, knowing we were going to uh, be meeting, I, I called them up, and they live apart, and I asked them, do you remember way back when, when I used to tuck you in, and they said, yeah. And so that kind of surprised me. I said, do you, do you remember what we prayed? And both said immediately, the Lord's Prayer. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, Grant said uh, that he, he remembers at one point me, as he got a little bit older, asking him, what, do you know what the words mean? Mm -hmm. And so he, he said that really made the words a lot more meaningful to him. Mm -hmm. And so those, those are two times. And then the, the third time actually is, you know, it's rather emotional. Uh, it, it happened just a couple of years ago. So my mom and dad, they both kind of suffered at the end of life, and they were the two happiest couple that you will ever find and um, and it it isn't ironic that they both died nine months apart mm -hmm. um, but uh, my mom had Lewy body dementia which is a horrific uh, hallucination type of uh, dementia and uh, my dad had Alzheimer's mm. and they're both in memory care and so my dad had a severe stroke and they took him to Rochester and uh, he lost his ability to swallow, mm. and he um, had a health care directive that, you know, he, we're going to put him on hospice mm -hmm. care. And, uh, and you know, I, I still remember seeing my mom, and my mom just was not very emotional. And I had to keep reminding myself because she is kind of a skeleton of who she really was. She had this disease. And because of this <laughs> disease, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And so my brother, my sister, Dar, in, even my two boys were in the room and we were sitting down around um, the, the room and my, my mom just out of the blue abruptly stands up and she, she says, let's all gather around the, the bed. And like, okay, mom's being a, a parent here. You get up and you get mm -hmm. around the bed. And she said, can we all hold hands and can we say the Lord's Prayer mm. mm -hmm. and 
she started it and she's our father who art in heaven and as she was saying the prayer it clearly she had this clairvoyance to her clarity yeah. clarity mm -hmm. and i stop and i look peeking up just like i was in middle school mm -hmm. and my dad somehow is saying the Lord's Prayer. Mm. I mean, he had lost his complete ability to swallow. Mm -hmm. They were moving him to hospice care. He couldn't talk. You know, you talk about God showing up. Yeah. It was the most powerful prayer I've ever been a part of. Very cool. And, you know, to share it with family, with the yeah. whole family on top of that. A beautiful moment in an incredibly hard time. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it was. So, yeah, you know, yeah. the Lord's Prayer, and, and I'm, I'm not going to lie, there have probably been plenty of times because it's the most common prayer that is spoken. I, I've said the Lord's Prayer at times where I haven't, you know, been passionate about it. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, that really, really means something. Yeah. And vi very vivid memories in a variety of parts in your life. When you were younger, when you were yeah. raising your sons, and then towards the end of your parents' life, like throughout your life. Exactly. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you for sharing that. And a question for you. In those, uh, these powerful moments that you had, and we use the Lord's Prayer in worship, do you think... Um, what do you think about how it impacts the community or outside of a worship space or outside of these sacred kind of moments or memories that we have? Do you think it has any impact there? Or does it, does it spill over into other parts of life? Well, you know, it, it only spills over into anyone's life if you allow it to. Mm. You know, if, if, you, if you say the Lord's Prayer and you think about the words, um, and you are asking for forgiveness, but at the same time, right after you're asking for forgiveness, you know, it, it says you need to forgive those who trespass against us mm -hmm. as well. And I think there's so much right now, our, you know, there, there's so much volatility, I think, in the world right now that, uh, you know, I think prayer is something that we can all use with the Lord's Prayer in particular, that I think could help, you know, if it was a bigger part of someone's regular prayer, mm -hmm. it can guide us. Yeah, a guiding, a teaching kind of yes. a mantra in a way of living. Exactly. Yeah, very cool. Um, what about your wonderings about this, this topic, either prayer in general or the Lord's Prayer? Do you have any wonderings or yeah. questions hanging out there? Well, you know, getting back to, you know, my mom and dad and that, that Lord's Prayer at, in Rochester Hospital, you know, what I wonder is, and I think I know the answer to this, is, you know, God was in that, that room, but it was almost as if my mom and my dad were saying, it's time for us to go mm. and carry on. Yeah. Don't lose the importance of, in this case, the Lord's Prayer, but mm -hmm. following God. And, yep, we'll, the faith and, and we'll meet up again. Yeah, and that's the hope we have. Yeah, and so that, that is such a, a, you know, heartfelt feeling mm -hmm. with something like that. And, and so it's, but that, that's one thing too that yeah. I think about. Yeah, very good. And how about for um, a special hymn or scripture or piece of art that you would like to share with us? Is there a religious song or something from the mm -hmm. arts that you appreciate? Yes. Um, as I thought about this, uh, this, this 
Actually, it was uh, my wife Dar's idea, and it was perfect. Uh, so we have a painting of Jesus, and when we, um, I think we got it when we were uh, as a wedding present, actually. Mm. Mm. And when we first were married, we lived on Main Street, and it was a two-story two house, and uh, bedrooms were on the second floor. And okay. so we would carry the boys up to bed at night, and right at the top of the steps, is where Dar put the picture. Mm -hmm. And so I don't even know how we started it, but we ended up getting into a routine every single night that they would kiss Jesus goodnight. Nice. You know, so it's like saying goodnight to everybody else and saying goodnight to Jesus. And then reminding us, make sure you kiss Jesus as well. And so, you know, as when the kids got a little bit older, we moved to a different house yeah. where we currently live right across from the Kittlesons. And uh, um, we, Dar, of course, wanted to put that same exact picture at the top of the steps. Nice. Uh, we no longer were carrying the kids up to bed at that time. But, <laughs> <laughs> but still in a place as yeah. Jesus was part of the household. And exactly. Very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. And it's a familiar picture, so um, people might recognize it. Yes, if they yes. It. So... Yeah. Any other um, things that you'd like to share or about either prayer in general or the Lord's Prayer that you'd like to add? I don't, I don't think so. I, uh, other than, um, I think when I watched uh, Sh Sheila talked about how when you shared with her, you know, the, the Holden mm -hmm. prayer, uh, that she did some research on it and she said it made her a better person. I think actually um the the idea of you asking me to do this with the lord's prayer mm -hmm. it it really really helped give me i think some good meditation some good thoughts and i think you know it, it's really good to reflect yeah. on your faith i think and sometimes we get so busy with our day-to-day -day life that we may pray and go on and on and on but I think it's good to reflect back as well. And I think that helps to strengthen things. Yeah. And I think um, all those big pieces in the small catechism, just the, that reflection of um, how God has given these things as a gift and they are a gift that keeps on giving. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. This morning or yesterday, I, I called my brother and my brother, uh, um, he and I didn't know this, and I wouldn't have known it had I not told him what I was going to be doing and just asked him maybe for some yeah. advice. And he says every day a part of his meditation is he says the Lord's Prayer every single day, and he says the Apostles' Creed every single day, nice. along with uh, reading devotion. And, Very and, cool. And so, I, you know, you find out little things that you, things. you wouldn't have otherwise known had you not asked me to do this. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, your stories, and your memories of what the Lord's Prayer means to you and your prayer life with us. And it gives us a lot to, to think about and wonder about and perhaps grow in our own faith. So thank you so much, Gary. Thank you.
light shines in the darkness. And, and the, the darkness, darkness has not overcome it. Stay. 
Merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our Lord. Thanks be to God.